Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is a conversation between two great personalities. I'm kidding. I know you're talking about a single product, but right. it, it, just humans are so complex that without UX, we probably wouldn't even know that we that kids could use uh, the, the box instead of the other thing. Because imagine I spent. Uh, I don't know, a hundred grand in a in a really complicated ad campaign about how this doll is the best doll in the world, and I never ever asked real children if they're going to use the doll or the box. So that's that's like a really lame but interesting example of how UX could have informed that campaign. Right. So let me give you another example. Then um, I was telling you that I can discover ways, new ways in which people are using the product, but then you as a marketing team can tell me this is the way the product should behave in uh, the digital interface, the product should have this personality because you are the one that are setting the brand strategy in the beginning. So I have to take that in, into account because the product itself has to have this personality as well. If I have a bad, bad experience in a restaurant or with an app or whatever, I'm gonna tweet about it, right. I'm gonna Facebook it, I'm gonna take a picture on Instagram and say, you know what, your product sucks. And I think it can be hard because before, like if you lived in a small town with 100 people, uh, persons or whatever and and you go to the store and and the the clerk was really rude to you Well, you went home and you were right. sad and probably told your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever But it, it wouldn't like go anywhere from that But now right. since we have social media and all the, those open forums It's really hard to not take into account how a brand communicates What they're expecting from you as a user or as a consumer right or as a customer so I think UX can pave the way of how we can make those people even happier than they are and how uh, that has to do with their own lifestyle. Like what, I wanna, what I wanna say is everything is part of the branding identity and if you have a good experience right. with an app, even if it's a, a potato chip app, it, it means something to you as a human being. And then I can take that story, if you tell me what the story is about, I can take it and advertise it as if it has always been that story instead of uh, right. the other part. And let me build that um, on that idea. Because um, I think there's no choice for them now. It's whether they like it or not. Brands are embedded <laughs> in this whole um, nonsense that we call the internet, right? <laughs> and while it might not be true for everybody in their market, I think it's true that more and more things are happening outside of the control of brands. So. Once you put out a product or a message, and the internet will literally eat it up right. and take it as as, as We their don't own. know what's going to happen, but right. something is going to happen. And that's why I think it's UX really important for marketing, because UX is all about humanizing technology and the experience that you have on this internet of sphere, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's really interesting, find that common ground between marketing and, and what we're doing at UX. It's really interesting what you say because it seems like it's compulsory now for a brand to like have a personality to actually right. act as a human being. And, and I think marketing and, and advertisement together have been trying to humanize brands for the last 50 years. And now that you, you, you're saying UX is humanizing technology, I can see a, 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 a very clear path in which uh, a brand could actually, whatever brand, no, no matter if it's an automotive motor thing or uh, window cleaning product, whatever, can actually humanize their message through UX research. And, and that is very puzzly to me. I don't know if that's the word, mm -hmm. but it seems like a puzzle to me because asking the right questions, for example, in a focus group or something like that, keeps me, it, it's still too general. Like, would you use the product? Yes or no. Right. Would you imagine having a red car instead of a black car? Yes or no. Uh, tell us what you feel when you buy a key that has your name on it. Well, I feel cool, but we don't really have like very specific methodologies like you right. guys have that yeah. can actually inform the message my brand needs to actually get to people. So, in, in like, a, I'm just gonna say in an organic way. Yeah, let let me tell you what you guys lack okay. that we do have. Okay. Which is uh, we don't take for granted what people say. Okay. We don't do surveys. So what we do is okay. to actually watch people doing stuff. People will always, and this is this is rule, this is a golden rule, we, because we're humans, we'll always do different from what we say. In UX research, the UX... So you're calling, UX calls human liars now, <laughs> in a way? So yeah, no, not, not in that way. 
We just don't notice. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm kidding. All right. So um, yeah, we do actually watch people doing stuff, and that's what will inform the strategy that we follow on the product that we are building, and ultimately will inform the way your brand is being perceived. So again, this is not a competition because we find that we have more common grounds than we thought. I would like to invite you guys to visit ux.nearsoft.com to see what we are doing at UX. And there's a whole bunch of stories at nearsoft.com slash blog and nearsoft.com slash about us and all sorts of things we're trying to do to make uh, people connect with us. So if you don't like the story or if you like it or you fall in love with us, please send us an email. Just visit us and tell us what you think about what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you.